we have to deal with everything that's telling us, no, that isn't going to happen. That won't work. You know, you've seen somebody else try it, or this went on, or what happened. But that's where faith comes in, and that's what God's trying to get us to accomplish and, and be a part of here in, the, in these last days. So I, I have uh, several scriptures here to open with, and I want to begin with Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 2 through 5. Ephesians 3, verses 2 through 5. Praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody on the Internet and Facebook that's joining us this morning. We appreciate you being a part of the service, and you certainly are. Amen. If you're here and joining with us uh, in the Spirit, yep. we're all one in Christ, and so we all come together in the house of God, which is this house. Praise yeah. the Lord. Amen. So God bless you. Wherever you are, you are in the house of God. Mm -hmm. As I said last week, a house you didn't build. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The person of Jesus. Amen. So in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 2 through 5, it says, If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, or this is Paul talking to uh, uh, new believers here, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets, by the Spirit. So this is not a textbook, and as Jody was talking and others here this morning, this isn't just a book. This is the Bible. It is the Word of God. And it is a, it is speaking to our spirit man. Now we can read it with the intellect and with the natural mind, but he's actually talking to our spirit. Yes. And that's what Paul, is talk, what Paul is talking about here. He said this is the knowledge and the mystery of Christ. He said it didn't come from books. It didn't come even from the Old Covenant. It came from God himself speaking spirit to spirit, him speaking to my spirit, and making himself real to me in a way that I never understood. Now, Paul had the Old Testament, but look what he did with it. He's like so many people. He sees there's a difference. When there really isn't a difference, it's our perception. It's the way religion has presented the two books or the two covenants as though they were totally contrasting. Well, they do contrast, but it's only because we don't understand what it is God's trying to do in the Old Testament. What he's trying to do is set us up for the New Testament, and he's trying to give us evidence of the truth of the New Covenant when it comes. So that we'll be able to go back and see that God isn't different. It's people that have changed because of the covenant they chose. Amen. So let's go to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Here the deal is, we have such prophetic power and giftings, and yet we don't use it. We wait for somebody else to come and give us a word. We wait for somebody else to come and lay hands on us. We wait for somebody else to come and speak to our situations. And God is saying, wow, you have this power. You have this ability. How about you just use it? Yes. I was talking to my daughter, uh, Alice, the other day, and one of her friends was, like a lot of people, they just said, uh, you know, I just... She got the new Bible, and it was a, it's one of these, uh, I forget what they're called, but anyway, they have a ledger on either side, so you can just write your thoughts in it, you know, like most of us have mm -hmm. done with ours, you know, we just scribbled everywhere and underlined and did all this other stuff. Well, she's come from a religious background. She's a, she was really paranoid about writing notes. Everybody, she said, I just can't get comfortable with it, you know. I, I was told so long, and so I reminded Alice of, of Don and Jane. When Jane was going through the, the uh, prognosis or the diagnosis of the cancer and so forth, and God spoke to uh, Don and said, stand on the word of God. Stand on the Bible. And I remember Don even saying, I felt a little uncomfortable with it myself. You know, just the Bible. I mean, come on. But God is trying to get us to understand this. This is supposed to be personal. Yeah. It's not just, you know, there isn't just a way of saying, okay, this is what the Bible does and this is how you deal with it. It's different for everybody in the circumstance you find yourself in. And the fact that he did what God told him to do, even though it wasn't comfortable, maybe, you know what I mean, traditionally, but he stands on the Bible anyway, lays hands on her and prays, and what happens? She's healed. Yeah. Why? Because Don prayed for her, yes, but mostly because he did what God told him to do yeah. in the circumstance. Right. That's what God was wanting, access to that situation right. and that circumstance. So that's what we have to realize. He, he prophesied. Yes. He didn't just speak some positive words. He was prophesying based on what the word of God said. Yes. And the result came to pass. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. That's what God's trying to get all of us to do. In every situation. Not necessarily stand on your Bible. But get a word from God and then right. act on it. Yes. Amen. 
So, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10, he says, And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. This is an angel that's speaking to Peter. He said, I'm thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, that have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus. Amen. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. In other words, we have a testimony of what Jesus has done in our lives. There, need to, there should be some prophetic things going on through us and by us. Amen? Right. All right. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Acts 2, 17 and 18. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. How many of you know we're in the last days? Yeah. We're in the last of the last days. I mean, I, that's what I believe. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. He doesn't say your ministers, your priests, your rabbis, your teachers. He says your young men. Your, in other words, he gives us a demographic here of everybody. It's, all, it's about everybody on earth, all people, humans. Amen. I'll pour out my spirit on your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Verse 18, and on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out of those in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. In other words, everybody is going to be prophesying if they understand their position yes. in Christ. Amen. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts but rather that you may prophesy. Praise the Lord. Verse 39. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy. Covet to prophesy. It's the only time I've ever seen where he said we should covet. Yeah. We should covet to prophesy. Mm -hmm. And forbid not to speak in tongues. If anybody's watching online, anybody that's here in the church congregation today, and you have not spoken in tongues, you should. You need to. Mm -hmm. You have the ability. As a believer, mm -hmm. you have that gift. You have that. And that's a powerful thing because it's not just about jabbering right. incoherently to other people. It's about talking directly right. spirit to spirit with God. Right. You, your mind may never understand what it is you're talking about, but God and your spirit know exactly. Yes. And it changes things. It changes circumstances. It changes situations. It changes you. Yes. It sets you up for things that God's trying to do in your life. So, again, if you've never spoken in tongues, if you're a believer, it's a gift. Yes. You don't have to do anything more to earn it other than to just receive it. Just believe and speak. Right. Amen? And if you have questions about it, you can contact me. I'll be happy to pray with you. Do whatever. But I'm just saying, this is incredibly important, especially in these last days that we operate in all of the gifts, in all of the, uh, the abilities that God has given yes, us indeed. to operate in because he's going to use those means. He's not, he's not trying to re, uh, you know, create the wheel. Yeah. He's trying to get us to flow in the things that he's already provided for yes. us that will change situations and circumstances that we're entering into. Amen? So the Bible is the highest authority, and it has the final say in everything. I'm going to repeat that. The Bible has the highest authority, better than the Constitution, more than any yes. other thing. I mean, I, I believe in the Constitution. Yes. I, I believe in our, our government as it was established. Amen? But it's not the highest authority. No. It's Jesus Christ. Yes. It's the Word of God yes. that has the final say yes. in any circumstance, any situation that you find yourself in or going into. Amen? We are to be like God. Speak to things that are not as though they are. If we start repeating everything we're seeing, we're going to get a bunch of crap we don't want. We need to be speaking against those things, right. speaking to what the Word of God says about them. Amen? Yes. So it's, uh, it's, it's the revelation of God. That's what this is. It's not just a bunch of uh, moral uh, good doings. And, it, and there's a, there are moralities being taught here. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not the purpose of this book. It's not to make us more moral. It's to make us Christ-like. It's yes. to make us believers in God. It's the revelation of God in written form, just as Jesus was the revelation of God in human form. It's God being revealed, yeah. written, and in flesh in the person of Jesus. Amen. First John chapter 5 
and verse 7. 1 John 5, verse 7. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Yep. Praise the Lord. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit inspired. This is just what y'all were talking about as far as believing what the Word of God says. If it's true, if it's, you know, infallible, however you want to put it. It's what he's telling us here. The Holy Spirit inspired and directed the writing of the Bible from the mind of God. Yes, somebody had to pen it. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit brought it from the actual mind of God to man to write down on pieces of paper. Praise the Lord. To record it for us so that we would have it. Amen. But it's we're looking, when we read the Bible, you're looking at the mind of God. That's why it's so outrageous. That's why the more you dig, the deeper you go, the more you read it, the more you find. Because there is no end to God. There's no end to the wisdom and the knowledge and the love of God. And that's why the more we understand this word, the more we understand God. Yes. The more intimacy we can have with yes. God. Yes. Amen? So we shouldn't be surprised to find that the Bible reveals to us how God thinks. I would say, well, you, know, you never know what God's doing. Yeah, you do. It's right here. He, he not only tells us what he has done and what he will do, he tells us what he thinks about it. Yes. Why he thought to do it in the first place. Yep. Okay. Amen? So how, how, it's how he talks. And the human terms he uses to express himself to us. I mean, this is God talking. And he uses human terms to relate to us so that we can relate to him. Amen? And all that Jesus said, just, it demonstrated God's way of talking. I've been with my father. I know how he talks. I know how he communicates. I know how he speaks to me, how he speaks to you, how he wants to speak to anybody. Amen? You could say he's been in the mind of God. Of God. Yeah. That's where he came from. He came out from God. Yeah. Amen. And, and revealed God then to us. Which is exactly what the Holy Spirit was doing when the Bible was being written. Doing the same thing. Instead of being put in a human form, it was put in print. Yeah. It was written out. Amen. It's prophecy. Yes. Amen. The words that we speak, he tells us they are life and they're dead. Choose life. Yep. What you're saying is what you're going to get, so make sure you're choosing the things that are, that are in concert with the Word of God. Yes. Amen? Believe me, Jesus didn't speak in 17th century King James English. He spoke like the common man of his day. He spoke probably Aramaic, yep. because that was the common language for the people of that time. He talked the same way we talk to one another, right. only, obviously, in a, in a different language, but the the nuances and the and the, the humor and the, the wit and all the things. That, it's just like people everywhere. That's how he communicated with them. He didn't come out and go, oh, great. Oh, you know. No, he was an average guy. I mean, to the to the normal person, he just seemed like a regular guy. Yeah. Which is why they wondered, how does he speak this way? Where is this coming from? We know this guy. We know his sisters. We know his mother. We know the town he grew up in. What's the deal here? Yeah. He had the Holy Spirit operating through him. He had God and he were one. Yes. Amen? John 5, 19. He said, I only say what I hear my father saying. Right? I only do what I see my father doing. Now remember, at that time, there was only the old covenant. But Jesus was the word of God. He was the complete word of God. So he was... He was speaking already to things under the New Covenant before the New Covenant actually even existed, and that's what was confusing people. And the reason he was doing that was because to try to show them that God you are trying to serve doesn't exist. You don't know him. You're, you're, you're worshiping something that is a fallacy, that's, yeah. a, that's dreamed up in your own uh, traditions. And you've distorted who he is, and so now here I am, and you want to kill me. And all I'm doing is exactly what God does. Yeah. So he said, hey, and answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. But what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. So we're not under any obligation to be able to do any hocus pocus stuff on our own. 
But if we will do what the Word of God says, God will back it up and make it come to pass. Yes. The God that is in us, is, we're no different than Jesus as he describes these, these scenes here in the New, Covenant, in the New Testament, I should say. Mm -hmm. he, he was totally dependent on God. Yes. He was operating as a man. Yes, he was God in the flesh, but he didn't live his life here as God. He lived his life here as a human being submitted to the Spirit of God, to doing what God was saying to do, amen, through his word, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. So when God says, I just want you to think about this in your own life, because I've experienced this too many times to not realize the truth of it. But when God says, I will, about things that he's planning on doing, he doesn't mean he's going to act by himself. Amen? Doesn't mean he's going to do these things apart from our involvement and our participation. Right. What do you think would have happened if Jesus had submitted to God None of the miracles would have taken place. Right? Nobody would have been raised from the dead. Right. No uh, revelation would have come in terms of what God was really all about and what he wanted. He had to work with him. So when he says, I will, he means we will. Right. If we're sitting around waiting on God to do something, we're backing up. Because the truth is, he works with us and through right. us. Uh, we're not taking anything away from God. We're just submitting ourselves so that he can have access into this realm. God only has access here through Jesus Christ right. and now through the body of Christ. Right. I'm telling you, God isn't just up there in heaven waving his hand and saying, let's take care of that. We don't want any more of that. He's going to have somebody down here to cooperate with. Him. Yep. Amen. Yes, he can do anything, but he restrains himself by his own word. Yep. You know, Jesus, the disciples said, let's call that fire. He said, you don't understand the spirit of your I, I could call legions here right now if I wanted to. All I have to do is say, come. Yeah. And there would be thousands, hundreds of thousands of angelic warriors here. But that isn't the way we operate. God needs me to submit to him. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when he says, I will, he's really meaning we will. Mm -hmm. Remember, God said, I will to Moses. When you go back to, uh, to uh, the scriptures they're talking about, it. Moses, he said to Moses, he said seven times, he said, I will. And that was concerning Egypt, the children of Israel, and uh, Canaan. God said, I will. Look, at, let's just read this quickly, just for your reminding. Uh, Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will. Look, look, look at the language, the way he's verbalizing this. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rid you out of their bondage. I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. I, and I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land, in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it you for an inheritance. I am the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Now when you read that, it, there's no explicit mention, really, of any responsibility on the part of Israel. Nope. When you read it, it just looks on the surface, it just looks like, I'm doing this, man. I mean, this is what I'm going to do. Watch. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But in fact, it sounds like an unconditional, absolute prophecy that isn't dependent on the human element at all. But instead, it relies on divine purpose, what God's intent was, what his purpose was, right? But we know from the Exodus story, God's I will actually meant he would cooperate with their efforts. Right? He had to get Moses to go back. He, God wasn't going to just go in there and start raining down plagues. He had to have a man. Yeah. He said, I'm going to do this. But what he was really saying was, we're going to do this. Yeah. You need me because you can't do it on your own. And I need you because i got to have human access. Yeah, right. Praise yes. the Lord. So, I will work supernaturally, is what he said. In those areas where you can't work naturally. Right. Where a natural solution won't work. That's where I will work supernaturally. Amen? I will deal with the other parties. 
What did he do? He, when they come to go into the, into the promised land, he had already been dealing with those people so that when they, the, the uh, Israelites showed up, they said to themselves, our hearts melted in us because we've been hearing of all that your God had done for you. How he overtook these and killed these and wiped these out. They were already freaked out and panicked because God had set them up, amen, working with Israel. So that when Israel would do what God told them to do, he would have the thing set up for their benefit. So that when they came, it was really God doing it, but they still had to show up and be involved. It's, it, again, it go, and I don't want to pick on, on the J here, but it's just so relevant to me. You know, what God could have just healed James. But he wants human interaction. He wants you to know you yes. have authority. Yes. And it's your authority that God works through. Yes. So when you hear the voice of God say, get on your, stand on the word of God mm -hmm. and pray. Mm -hmm. You know you've got an answer coming. You right. know, I'm not, this isn't something I dreamed right. of. This isn't what I wanted to do. Right. This is me cooperating with God, giving God access into this yes. realm so that I can get access yes. into that realm. Yes. yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. I'll work supernaturally in the areas that you can't work naturally. I'll deal with the other parties. I'll deal with the people on the other end, those other people that are involved, and I'll take care of the other end of the situation. You just do what you need to do. You don't need to worry about going to Washington, D.C. and, right. you know, throwing a fit and have a, you know, you, you do what you right. You do what I told you. Do right. what this word says, and I'll take care of the other end. Right. You don't have to physically do anything. You have to stand that on the word right. of God. You have to use yes. this word prophetically, yes. and God will bring it to pass. Yes. Amen. That is right. I will be the hidden, yes. invisible power force enabling you to perform victoriously. That's what he's telling yes. us. But yes. I, I still got to have you, yep. and you still got to have me. Yep. Amen. I'll give you miracles to manifest, wisdom to walk in, and to walk in, into, in my ways. Amen. And work my will and the patience I'll give you to prevail until you realize the prophetic yes. promise. Yes. If we stay focused, see, the problem is we just come up with something and we think, well, maybe that was just me. Well, if it's the word of God, it wasn't just you. Yeah. Now the problem is you've got to stand firm. Yes. You've got to be patient. You've got to be trusting yes. that God will bring it to pass, and he will. If you'll wait, if you'll trust, if you'll continue to confess and say what he says about the situation. Yes. That's where we're at, church. We're at yes, a place where it's time to, you know, do it. Yeah. It's, it's time that we're talking about it yeah. and exercising our intellect about it to start physically operating. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On the other hand, when God says you will, he also means we will. Yeah. I think just one example is Gideon perfect example for this. Look at Judges chapter 6, verses 12 through 14. Judges 6, 12 through 14. And that's why, you know, the scripture says he chooses the, the, the little things, the nothings, the nobodies, mm -hmm. to bring to not the things that are. Yeah. So what does he do? He gets the one guy, the biggest coward probably in Israel, uh, who has this really horrible low self-esteem. He says, I'm nobody. I come from a family of nobodies. And I live in a nowhere. Yeah. We don't have any control over our environment. Everybody else is dictating to us. We can't even grow a crop or, or reap a harvest from the crop without fear of the enemy coming in and stealing it from us or taking it from us and killing us. I can't do anything, Lord. If I could, I would have done something. But I'm hiding here in this yeah. wine press trying to thresh some grain because it's the only way I can try to survive and my family get by because of all the chaos in the world. Yeah. And God said, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know he was looking over his shoulder for somebody. <laughs> and Gideon said unto him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of... He said, You go in your power, and you are going to save Israel from the Midianites. Yes. Have I not sent you? Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. So no wonder Gideon needed some assurances before he would go. Yeah. 
The whole emphasis seemed to be on him and his ability, his resources, his strength, his courage, his intellect. You know, all that's what it looked like. And then you read on and get into Judges chapter 7, and you start seeing all this crazy stuff. God saying, no, no, that's too many people. Uh, you got way too many people to help you with this battle. I mean, there's, there's only a few thousand of them, and, and uh, you don't need this many. Get, let's get it down to a, a workable figure here, right? And, and how does he choose these 300? Yeah. The ones that laugh, like dogs. Yeah. You know, they're looking around. They're not sticking their head in the water and drinking. They're, they're looking around, keeping an eye open. Yeah. You know? I'm looking for some people who got their eyes open, got their ears tuned in here, amen, that are focused. Yep. And the further that, that Gideon progressed in the call, the more ridiculous it seemed in the natural, yeah. right? Until he finally gets, it gets to the place where he's, he's got to fight these thousands of the enemy, amen, and he's only got 300 men, some clay pots, yep. and candles. Mm-hmm. Now, if that doesn't, you know, yeah. give you pause for concern. Yeah. I mean, when, you know, these are trained warriors over here on the other side. That's an army. That isn't a village. That's an army there. But here's what God did. I want to make it look like it's impossible for you. But what did God do? He didn't send down fire from heaven. He gave the enemy a dream. He planted something in their yeah. thoughts. This great army is going to come and destroy us yeah. and take everything and kill us all. Yeah. That was the dream, and they were repeating it the next morning or the next day when Gideon is out there with his 300 and the pitcher and the trumpet and the uh, candle. God had set them up mm-hmm. so that what looked like an impossibility turned out to be a heroic event on, yeah. on the part of, of, of Gideon and his 300 but a revelation and a manifestation of the power right. of God in a situation yes. where they didn't have the ability to do what God told them they were going to do. Right. But they trusted yeah. God in spite of it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Believe yes. me, God is working on the other end. Yes. We may not see, we may not, we're hearing all the blow. We're hearing yeah. all the brag and yeah. doshas and I mean, what we're going to do, how we're going to take this and do that and everything. No. It's just talk. Yeah. Okay? It, it's just talk. Just because you got a voice doesn't mean you got something to say. Right. So they're, they're out there blowing and telling us all, oh, you know, it's time to cower and get fret. No, believe me. No. God is working on the other end. Yes. We don't have to worry about that part. We just got to worry about our part. Our yeah. part is to stay yeah. in faith and confess this yes. word and stand on this word and let God take care yes. of the impossible. We'll do what's possible. Yes. That's God telling us to go do this. Yes. Amen. It's always we will, even when he says it's I will or you will. It's still always we will. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We will be, amen. We will. Every time, amen. Mm-hmm. So whether it's I will, you will, it always ends up the same, we will. Mm-hmm. We will be the mortal presence on earth performing. And he'll be the invisible force mm-hmm. in the spirit realm working yes. miracles. Glory. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. We just have to keep the faith. Yes. We just have to stay locked in on this word. Yes. And God will do the impossible if we'll do the possible. Right. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. It's like Tim was saying, we, we want all the answers up front. That's human. That's just being human. We want to know. All, we want all the I's dotted, all the T's crossed. We want to see the map. We want to have a big blow-up picture of how this is how it's all going to play out. This is how this is where you'll be when this happens. This is where they'll be when this happens. This is what it's going to look like. He rarely ever does that. Right. In fact, he usually twists things around from a human perspective to where we can't picture it happening at all. Right. Totally have to be dependent on God. Mm-hmm. So the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So God only reveals to us what we need to know. Because if he, if he revealed everything to us, it would probably be too overwhelming. We would never do anything. Mm-hmm. So he, he only reveals what we need to know in order to do his will more perfectly. Amen. At that particular time and that particular place. That's why you may go your entire life and never hear a specific thing about a certain situation. 
Why? Because you didn't need to know anything about that situation until you were in it. So he doesn't give you a, you know, a life plan as such. So you know everything that's going to happen and how it's going to happen. I'll be prepared for it. No, you'll get blindsided in life if you live any length of time. You have been multiple times and will even more as we go on in life. But the, the good news is that nothing surprises God. It may shock us. It may surprise us. It may freak us. But it's not bothering God at all. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows when we want to conquer. He knows we're victorious. He just needs us to cooperate, amen, to the ability that we're capable of. Amen. You know, Joseph, just think about this. Joseph had prophetic dreams, and they were revealed that he would rule over his brothers. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, he had multiple dreams that were the same thing, that you're going to be above them. They're going to be bowing to you. Right? Like the stars bow to the sun and all these things. But they didn't include any mention of being sold into slavery. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. It didn't have anything to do with the issues that he would have with Potiphar's wife. Didn't say anything about his time that he would spend in prison. Right? A number of years passed before Joseph was able to see the whole picture of God's plan for his life. The same was true for Abraham. The same was true for Moses. The same was true for David. It didn't just happen one day. Uh, well, there, that's what God said. Here it is. You get up tomorrow and you got all the answers. You know? No. He's a God of faith. Yes. And if you don't exercise faith, you don't get what he says. Not because he's withholding it, it's just the only way he has of getting it to you. Praise God. Yeah. These people, everybody in back in the Bible, had to believe what God said. Mm-hmm. Then they had to say it, and then they had to do it. Based on what God had told them. They had to believe what they said in spite of what they saw. They had to believe what they said in spite of the doctors report. They had to believe what they said in spite of what the banker said. Right? In spite of how the kid might be acting. I am not how shall be say. They may be acting like a little demon. But the story's not over. No. Right? He's promised us. We have to stay in the faith and yes. say what God has said in the face of what looks to be a contradiction or a lie. Right. Isn't that what Jesus did all the days of his ministry? <coughs> he looked at the leper. Yep. Instead of running from him, he reaches down and heals him. Yep. The dead child, instead of grieving and crying and falling on his face with the family, he says, step outside for She's just yes. asleep. Wake up. Yeah. And they turn a funeral into a party. Yeah. Into a celebration. Yeah. When we look at things that are not as though they were, when we speak positive to the negative, when we speak healing where there's sickness, when we speak uh, financial security where there's uh, lack, we're prophesying truth. Mm-hmm. Do, do you understand that? That is a prophecy. Yes. It's not wishful thinking. It's not, it's not religious rituals. It's prophetic. It's yes. prophetic. It's what God has ordained us. Yes. It's, the, it's part of the gifts that he has given us yes. to operate in this earth so that we can bring heaven to earth, yes. so that we can experience the power of God in our yes. lives. Yeah. You don't have to be weird. You don't have to be spooky. You can be just as, well, you can be weird because, you know, I am a little bit, but you can, you can be whatever you are and still function and still operate in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit because it's already in you. It's, the gifts are in you. You just have to believe it and act on it. You've got to stand on the Word of God. You've got to confess what God says you know, in spite of what you're seeing, in spite of what you're hearing, in spite of what you're feeling. God said it. Therefore, it is finished. It is done. And I will not move, be moved until I see the manifestation. That is right. Praise the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. 1 Thessalonians 5, 20 and 21. Praise God. Tim is absolutely on point. I mean, it's time to obey God. And that isn't, you know, being... You know, some religious 
you know, punching bag. Yeah. It's when we obey God, what, how do we obey God? By agreeing with God, by saying what God says about us. Yes. By saying what he says instead of what we're thinking or feeling or, or fearful of. That's true. That's obedience. He said, I'd rather have obedience than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I'd rather see you declaring my word, yes. prophesying what I have already spoken, than seeing you going on a 30-day fast. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, cutting yourself or doing whatever, you know, yes. thing you might think is going to bring God's attention. I just want you to believe what I'm saying is true. Yes. Act on it, and you'll get the results. Yes. Praise the Lord. Despise not prophesying. Yes. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. That's this. It's the only good thing we know. know. Jesus, they said, yes. good master. He said, why call you be good? There's only one that's good. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things. How do you prove it? By standing on it, by confessing yes. it, by declaring it. Yes. Hold fast that which is good. Do not get moved from the word. Yep. Hang on to it. Yep. It's the sword. It's your weapon. Amen. It's the, it's the means by which you overcome. Yes. Praise the Lord. See, here's the thing about personal prophecy, and that's what we're talking about. Personal prophecy just simply means every person has the ability to operate in this as a believer. But it's also personal for me. I, I, I can't get to every uh, prophetic meeting that there is. I, I, and I can't stand watching it all on TV either. So, I mean, so I'm limited. But he says, look, here's the deal. You are a personal prophet to yourself. You need to be speaking to you. Yep. Yes. Amen? You, you need to be prophesying yes. self-fulfilling yes. prophecy yes. to yourself yes. as well as to others. Right. And we're, 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 it's, many times it's much easier for us to prophesy to somebody than to me. You know, it's easier for me to prophesy to Sally and tell her, this is what you, you know, this is what you should have. This is what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I don't have her issues. Not that she has issues, I'm just saying. You know, we all got stuff. Right. But I don't know every little stuff that goes through her head. I don't know every fear. I don't know every historic event that's taken place in her life the way she does. Right. So it's easy for me to say, yeah, but the word of God, go for it, girl. And she's going, yeah, but you know, come on. I, we've been through it. I did I tried this. I, that didn't work. And so it's the same way with me. Yeah, somebody else can prophesy to me, over me, mm -hmm. easily. Just, there's the word of God. Go with the power of his strength and his might. And I'm thinking, yeah, right. Well, I tried that a couple weeks ago, and, you know, it didn't work out too well. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with me, and that's what God is trying to get us right. to understand. The thing about personal prophecy is it makes God personal. Yes. Jesus is just casting off on somebody else, right? But personal prophecy makes God personal to me. Yes. Makes you intimate with me. Yes. Because now he knows all this crap. He knows stuff that I don't even know about me. Right. And yet he's still saying this works to me. Yep. It's the only thing that will work. Yep. Yes. But you've got to put your confidence in it. You've got to put your faith in it, not your history. Not your past, not your failures, not your successes, not this or not that, but simply in my word and me. Yes. Praise the Lord. It makes God personal. It makes God real to us, individually. Yes. Through God's prophetic word and our personalizing it, the prophetic words of God activate hope. And it causes us not to be ashamed, the scripture says. Not to be ashamed means we're going to get whatever it is we're saying we're going to get. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be embarrassed by not getting it. We're not going to be ashamed. We're going to experience it. Yes. Prophetic anointings impart grace yes. and patience. You see those same words coming up in every one of these little conversations that Paul's having about prophetic words, about prophecy. It's always grace and anointing, and it imparts patience mm -hmm. as well as grace. Mm -hmm. It gives you the ability to hang on yeah. when you're thinking in your natural mind. Yes. Uh, this is going on long enough. I should have gotten an answer by now. I should have seen something by now. Twenty. Well, yeah. Tim talks about it all the time. Yeah. What about Moses? Yeah. How many conversations do you suppose Moses had in that wilderness for 40 years? Oh yeah. You know, he had to hang on, and he must have. He, I'm sure he had his weaknesses and his failures, but he had to have held on enough that God showed up. 
Moses, Moses, yeah. told you to get on back to Egypt. Yeah. And my people are coming out. Yeah. I've set yeah. things up. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to send you in there to yeah. do this. And again, as, as Tim mentioned, what does Moses do? He did, he did the same thing we usually do. Yeah. Right. Well, surely you could get you know Kenneth Copeland to do this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Jimmy Swagger or somebody. You know, you, you can find somebody, a big name that everybody has some kind of awe for, for or believe that they have some great, powerful anointing and giftings and so forth. No. Yeah. I'm not looking for Saul. Yeah. I'm looking for David. Yeah. I'm looking for the guy yeah. who's just kind of out there yeah. in the back country. Not, nothing special to attract anybody to it except yeah. me. And what attracts me to him is his faith in me. Yeah. He said he believes yes. in me. Yes. And I can do more with that little red-headed kid yep. than I can with giants yep. and military geniuses. Amen. Praise the Lord. First Timothy 4, verses 14 and 15. There's another example. Timothy is a young guy. Uh, not highly sought after it, but as in terms of a minister or anything. But his prophecies yep. had been spoken over him. And it says, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Me, uh, meditate upon these things, and give thyself wholly to them, that thy property may appear to all. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Now remember, Timothy, they don't have a New Testament. Mm -hmm. They don't have this yet. It's, it's not going to be written some of it for another 30, 40 years. So Timothy has to operate by the word that God has spoken and the prophetic words that were spoken over him by Paul and others. In other words, he had to look at the word of God as though it were prophecy. He said, there's a gift in you. You have this gift by the laying on of hands, by the prophetic words that were spoken over you. Now you have to operate from that prophetic reality. Amen? So neglect not that gift that's in you. What's the gift that's in you? Prophecy. You have the ability to prophesy. Yeah. You've been given gifts. You need to be operating in them, Tim. If you're going to have success in the ministry, Tim, you better get to operating by the prophetic word. Mm -hmm. You better function according to the way God intended it to function, or you're not going to have any success. Yeah. And if you want to know the truth, I believe that's why for the first 100 years, the church functioned oh, nearly 300 years uh, in the power of of what we would call uh, a book of Acts experiences. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they were operating prophetically based on what the word of God had said and what Jesus had spoken, and that's how they walked out their lives. They weren't trying to create another religion. That didn't come along and, 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 you know, until the Catholic Church or the Universal Church was, was birthed in 325 or somewhere about. And what happened at that point? Everything about the spirit got stuck. And everything about traditions and religious rituals became the forefront. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing it that way ever since. Yeah. And even when we've had revivals, when we've had breakthroughs, and moved back to try to operate in the original plan that God had for us, we continue to drag. Yeah. Just as Jody talked about, just as Suzanne, still dragging our baggage, still yeah. dragging the, oh, I've been such a jerk, you know, God can't use me because I just said this or I just did that or I didn't. Or this thought comes to me, and there's a person over there who needs healing, right. or who needs deliverance, and I can't pray for him because I got too much baggage, I got too much of my own crap. Why? Because I'm focusing on what the enemy is planning yes. in my mind instead of what God has already declared. Yes. We are the righteousness yes. of God in Christ. We're not becoming no. the righteousness of God. We are. are. It's done. It's yes. settled. There is no sin right. in me. I have the ability to perform sinful acts. But it's not sin. I know that sounds, it sounds crazy, but I'm not capable of sinning. My flesh can still do sinful stuff. But I'm not That's no right. longer identified in the That's flesh. Right. I'm identified That's as right. a child of God, which is a spirit. Yes. Yes. And that spirit is as perfect as yes. Jesus. Yes. He doesn't see any difference whatsoever. And that's the enemy's challenge. That's what he's doing to our children and our yes. grandchildren and yeah. anybody else, our friends and what have you. That they have this religious kind of concept because that's all they've ever been exposed yeah. to for the most part. 
And then when we try to talk to them, they think, well, maybe Chris, maybe he's not quite right. I mean, there may be some civility moving in here or something, because it sounds too good to be true. Right. Yes. It is. Yes. But it's still true. It is. It's Jesus. Yes. Who so loved the world. Yes. That he gave himself, he gave his only begotten son, he gave himself as a human yes. to save the entire world. This is what's so difficult because when we see the people that are contrary to God, who hate God, who hate anything about God, and yet God still loves them. I know. Yes. And it's just difficult for me to love them. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's the challenge. I got, we got to separate ourselves from the people. And recognize there is a demonic force yes. at work here, and yes. there is the force of God at work. Yes. Yes. Our weapons are not carnal. No. And we're not fighting with flesh and blood, even as much as we would like to at times. Right. We're fighting against principalities and powers, yes. evil, the wickedness in high places. Right. And the only way to bring them down is through Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Yes. Ephesians 4, verses 7 and 8. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ, which is limitless. Yeah. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, yes. and he gave gifts to men. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherein he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. Let's go to verse 15 and 16. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. How? The way he just described it in verses 7 and 8. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied for each one of us, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, what does he say prophecy should do? should express love. Yes. It should bring uh, encouragement yes. and blessing. Why? Because that is the nature of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. So he gives us his way of operating prophetically, speaking to things that are not as though they are, yes. and they come to pass, so that we can operate as children of God, yeah. as sons of God, and daughters of God. Speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So we begin to function as Christ, not just look like Jesus. Right. You know, so we're not just perceived from heaven as Jesus, but we actually literally function on earth the way right. Jesus functioned on earth. Praise the Lord. Neglect not the gift that's in you. Yes. That gift is the word of prophecy. It's the word of God. Yes. He said, I have, he said, you have the word, but he said, I'm going to put it in you. That's why Don could say, He's driving down the road with his folks, and he's four years old, and he looks out and he says, God did all this. I had a similar experience. I was probably six, eight, I don't know, I was laying on the picnic table in the backyard. It was before I was working for my dad, so I had to be younger than 10. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, you can relate to that as yeah. well, I'm sure. But anyway, I'm laying on the picnic table. It's a you know, early summer day. It's, it's sunny, it's bright, a cloud, few clouds, just as clear as it can be. And I'm looking up and I'm thinking, I'm talking to Jesus. Yeah. You know? You know, and I, we went to Sunday school, but it wasn't a, you know, we weren't really super religious in that way. But my mother always prayed for us at night. And we had to say grace and so forth. So I was conscious of God. And I'm laying out there, and I don't know. You know, I had a supernatural experience in Texas when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I couldn't tell you when I actually got born again. Because I know God. Even though I didn't follow God, I still knew of his yeah. existence. And there were certain things I just wouldn't go beyond. You know what I mean? I, and, and there's so much that I was willing to do, believe me. But there were some lines that I just wouldn't cross. And it was usually because of what it would do to somebody else and you know what the consequences would be. But I can remember standing in my parents' living room, and I was still in school. I was in high school, probably sophomore or something in high school. And I can remember praying. My older sister had gotten born again 
in a Baptist church at the Sea of Jesus. And she was uh, she's three years older than me. She's since deceased, but she was a, really a good role model in terms of being a believer, a Christian, and loving God, and so forth. And I could see, I saw that there was a change in her life. I knew something had happened. And I can remember standing in there praying and saying, God, I have to know. I, I need to have some kind. In other words, I was asking, I want to feel something. Yeah. You know, I, I want lights flashing. I want bells going off. I want to feel it in me. I, I got to know. See, I didn't want to, I, I, faith wasn't there to the, level, to the level it needed to be. Right? Because we're saved by faith through grace. And I was wanting an experience in terms of, you know, feeling something. And so, well, God did give that to me. But years later, and I had been saved probably since I was a young kid, before I was ever in my teens. But I was looking for things other than what God was trying to reveal. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And I bet that's true for a lot of us. Yes, we, I'm sure we have, you know, geographic time kind of control the situations that we can look to and say, that was it. But I'll bet you, Tim's mother's prayers, mm -hmm. grandmother's prayers, mm -hmm. had established something in him before he made that trip right. to the altar. Oh, yeah. Now, he may not have been a Jesus freak or whatever you want to call us back in those days, but there was something in him yep. that believed enough to even go yep. and to not ridicule or to mock. And that's because of the prayers of our parents and our yes, grandparents and so on and so forth. Believe me, they make a difference. And our thank prayers God. make a difference in our yes, grandkids and our great grandkids, yep. even when it doesn't look like it. Because I guarantee you, anybody who was looking at my life from the time I was about 17 or 18 until I was 40 wouldn't see much of Jesus. They wouldn't see much of what would have been considered yeah. answered prayer. True. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly and completely to the more things. These things. This word. The spirit realm is really where, where God loves yeah. and faith operates. Emotions are in the soul. Yes. Our five senses, including feelings, are in the natural flesh realm. Yes. Our reasoning is in the mind and not in the spirit. Praise the Lord. So our traditions, our beliefs, our strong opinions mm -hmm. are not the witness to prophetic truth. Mm -hmm. They can make all the sense in the world from a natural perspective. You can argue it all day long, and, and we know plenty of people that do it. Yep. But it doesn't make it true. In fact, those parts of us bring doubt. Mm -hmm. They cause confusion. They cause resentment. Rejection and even rebellion against the prophetic words that have been spoken. I can't tell you how many people over the years that I've been in ministry that have come to me with a promise from God, mm -hmm. declare it, stand in on it, believe God's going to do this, but He doesn't do it in six months. He doesn't do it in a year. It might be not doing what you're supposed to be doing in terms of confession and belief and confidence right. in it, and it might just be the time, of, the fullness of time hasn't come. And we have to stand in faith. Again, Moses, right. David, Joseph, right. Right. Gideon, I mean, look at the lives yes. yeah. that they spent Abraham. Yeah. Years and years and years standing on a word from God, confessing that word, Abraham, I am the father of many names, all of these things. And seeing absolutely nothing, really. Now, God may have been still blessing them and doing some things for them, but nothing of that promise. They're, they're not, they didn't see any of the promise. David, for crying out loud, he's hiding in caves yeah. and running from, and he's the king. Yeah. I've anointed you this day, I've anointed you king, but for the next 10 years, you're going to be running like a dog. Because of a guy who thinks he's king. Yeah. So it can cause us to become, not only feel rejected, but it can cause us to become rebellious yeah. to God. And like, well, God, you said you didn't do this, you didn't do it. Usually we take that out on the other people, and most of the time it's the preacher because he's the one that told you that. <laughs> you just don't understand it. <laughs> well, then I would suggest you get in there and figure it out. Yeah. Because I can use all the help I can get, I can guarantee you that. Praise the Lord. 
So our head may say no, but our heart's saying go. Yeah. Do it. Come on. Yes. Take a step. I know. Don't, don't worry about the risk. If God's for you, who can be against you? Right. Yes. Our soul may say, I don't understand. And it will, I promise you, if it's of any consequence. Yeah. But our spirit is saying, it's okay. Trust not. Do not lean on your own understanding because it's going to get you in trouble. It's going to mess you up. It's going to cause you to be fearful. It's going to cause you to, to back away from what God's trying to do in your life. Praise the Lord. First Timothy 1, 18 and 19. A couple more scriptures here and we'll wrap up. Praise the Lord. First Timothy 1, verses 18 and 19 says, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou be by them mightest war a good warfare. Because of the prophecies, because of the things that have been spoken based on the word of God into your life. Holding faith and a good conscience, yes. which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. So they didn't get to see the manifestation. They wrecked before they got to the shore. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick, it's powerful, yes. and sharper than any two-edged sword, yes. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, or yes. flesh and the spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yes. It'll tell you whether you're in the spirit or whether you're in the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> it will. It'll tell you whether you're moving in faith or if you're just standing hoping for something to come from somewhere else. Amen? We need to have the Spirit and the Word of God in order to operate the way we're supposed to operate. Exercising, the Scripture talks about exercising spiritual senses. The only way you do that is through the Word of God, and if you're willing to make the commitment to stand on it, to speak, to prophesy over yourself yep. and over anybody else that's willing to receive it. Yep. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 15. And I'll show you what I mean. Because here, here's Daniel, a guy mightily used of God. But when the thought, when the words came to him from the angel, he said, this is blowing my mind. I cannot make any sense of it. This is crazy. This, this is not human. This isn't the way humans talk, right? He said, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit. In the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me. In other words, the things that were coming to him and he would, that were being prophesied to him, about the future of the church. He said, it's, it's freaking me out. It's blowing my mind. I can't get my head wrapped around it. It's too, it's too much. Right? But he hangs in there, and he continues to trust God in spite of how bizarre this all looked to him in his own mind. I mean, remember, this is thousands of years prior to what's going to take place. So, look at verse 18. But the saints of the Most High, now he's, it's coming to him. He says, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Now he's prophesying yeah. something that came to him prophetically that was more than he could quite grasp and, and even get out of it. But within a couple of verses, God continues to speak to him. Yeah. And now he's saying what God says. Yeah. Now look at verse uh, 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. That's where we have to be confessing. That's where yeah. we have to stand. That's what we have to believe. That's what we have to act on. Yeah. Praise God. In First Corinthians, let's, let's look, go quickly, let's go back to First Corinthians uh, 14, verse 39 again. We read it earlier, but here he's saying, the kingdom is going to happen. This is going to happen. Prophecy, I'm prophesying. This is what's going to take place. Wherefore, brethren, come and prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Yeah. We should be jealous yeah. of this word, to speak it, to prophesy. Amen. And when it becomes too much, when the prophetic words that we're reading look like, oh, come on. I've been reading this for a long time, and it hasn't happened yet, and I don't see how it can happen under the circumstances we're living in today and because of the conditions and so on and so forth. But see, that's what the world tries to do. It tries to adapt this to our time. 
doesn't work that way. No. Our time is going to adapt to this, whether yeah. it wants to or not. No. Right. So what's he, what's he saying? He said, you need to, when, when this becomes too much for you, that's when praying in tongues comes in. Yeah. Because it will take the stress away. No matter what it is you're freaking about, I mean, it happens to me every night. I can promise you I'm filled with all sorts of bizarre thoughts and fears and worries. But at some time during the night, maybe 3 o'clock in the morning, maybe 4 o'clock in the morning, maybe 6 o'clock in the morning. But it'll come, and it'll just feel like a weight. I mean, I just, it, it's almost nauseating. Out of control, like I don't have any control over this stuff that's going on. I, I need to, i got to do something. Kids are going to grow up in a world unlike the world that I grew up in, and it's going to be so different and so weird and I'm freaking out. But there's no answer in my head. Right. So I begin to pray in tongues. Right. And I'll either go back to sleep or I'll be so calm I can just lay there and just like those thoughts yeah. that disappear. They no longer there. Mm -hmm. The way we maintain our prophetic truths and realities is when we get overwhelmed by natural circumstances, right. we need to step into the spirit. Quickest way and the most powerful way to do that is by speaking in tongues. Yeah. Just like the Lord of And let God say what He yes. wants to say for Himself through you, through your spirit. Mm -hmm. And it'll change situations and circumstances. Isaiah said, Who shall He teach knowledge? Mm -hmm. Who shall He make to understand them that are weaned? Who shall He make to understand them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast? God's words of prophecy are to be taken personal <coughs> because they're the only way he can mature us. Yeah. How did Jesus rule and reign? Perfectly. Yeah. I only say what my father said. Mm -hmm. I only do what I see my father do. So prophecy has to be taken personally because it's the only way we can close with this, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 13 to 15. Can we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ? That's, that will happen here on earth. But we have to do it the way he did it. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, yes. carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. Mm -hmm. yep. Cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Right. We become this, this mature yes. Christian, this fully Christ-like, by only saying, what the Father says. Praise the Lord. That's not religious. That's not religion. No. It doesn't eliminate your life. It doesn't change your, you know, your interaction with family and so on and so forth. But what it does is every time you come to a decision, every time you come to a crossroad, every time you turn on the news, every time you're hearing the BS right. coming out of it, and the fear and the monitor and all the other stuff, what are you going to live by? What are you going to believe? Right. Are you going to believe what, what some path went yep. to Washington is saying? Or are you going to believe what right. God said? And I'm, not, and I'm not saying that to be, no, yeah. you know, left or right or Republican or Democrat. I'm saying they're all faulty. They're all, they all they are, are flawed. The only one that isn't is God. Right. So if I want the truth, I need his truth. Right. I want truth that's going to be the same yesterday, today, right. and forever. Not something that's going to change with the next fad right. or the next uh, cultural movement that we have or whatever it might be. Or the next young right. kid that comes out of college and decides he's got the answer for everybody. Right. Or some half wit notion, right? I need the truth. Because I hear it every day. I'm hearing people say, well, so and so said that they're doing this. Where, where did so and so get this information? Right. Well, probably from the internet because it's there, it must be true, right? Yeah. But I mean, there are more kind of, what do you call it, uh, conspiracies. Yes. Uh, there's enough crap. That's real, that we can see with our own two eyes. I don't need conspiracies. No. I don't need fear mongering. No. 
Because all I'm going to do is come back to this. I'm just going to come back and say, the Lord has spoken. This is what God is saying. I'm not going to argue with you. If you don't want to agree with what the Word of God says, that's your business. You can have the other crap if you want it. You can have my share. Because I'm not taking it. Amen? We've got to stay focused on the prophetic Word of God. Not just for ourselves. Especially for ourselves first. So that, as Tim said, isn't it weird how God does this? He says, bring it to me. And he gives it to the disciples, and the disciples dispense it yeah. to everybody who had need of it, yes. who was willing to receive it. Right. So he, God spoke this prophetic word to us so that we would then be able to speak it to somebody else, to ourselves, and then to share it with somebody else so that they could get the benefit of all that God has provided for them, which is Amen. eternal life yes. and fellowship with God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Go out there, talk like you are somebody, because you are a prophet of God. Thank you, James. Go ahead, Ron.